Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. You know, I've been watching this president for six years. And after this week's prayer breakfast, it all came together. It finally made sense to me. Barack Obama is comfortable with extremism. He's okay with it. He's nonplussed. It's part of what happens. It explains why he goes golfing within minutes of announcing the beheading of an American. It explains why he didn't join 40 world leaders in France to denounce Islamic terrorism. It explains why he doesn't attend certain funerals. Why he does nothing about the wholesale slaughter of Christians in the Middle East, or the raping, beheading, crucifying, and burying alive of children there. Why he doesn't get excited about people who cross his red lines. And it explains why he so easily pivots to health care after announcing the burning alive of a coalition pilot. But back to the prayer breakfast. Take a look at this. And lest we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place, remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. So this is not unique to one group or one religion. There is a tendency in us, a sinful tendency, that can pervert and distort our faith. You know, the president's comments didn't make sense to a lot of people, including Joe Scarborough. You almost have to ask the question, where did he go to church? <laughs> where would he get such ideas from? You know, Joe, I'm so glad you asked that question. It took me back to this man whose church the president attended. Oh, no, no, not God bless America, God damn America, that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. Of course, that's the famous Reverend Jeremiah Wright, in whose, in whose pew the president sat for two decades. And what was that other thing, get off our high horse? Are Americans on a high horse because we condemn the jihad of Islamic terrorists? Are you saying it's our turn? That we have it coming? Or that by pointing out centuries-old wrongdoing, you excuse the slaughter of innocents today? Mr. President, what's most interesting is that with the Crusaders, you so easily identify them as Christians. Why is it so hard for you to identify today's jihadi terrorists as Muslim? Throw a rock at Christians? No problem. But never speak of Islamic terrorists. Mr. President, aside from the obvious that was then and this is now, the Koran is interpreted by some as demanding jihad, the taxing or killing of non-believers, and a worldwide caliphate. And surprise, today's terrorists are beheading, imposing that same jizya tax, and in their march to create an even bigger Islamic State. Stop apologizing and stop pussyfooting around with this language dance. We get it. Not all Muslims are terrorists. It was Egypt, a country of 90% Muslim, that rose up against the jihadists who were also Muslim. Consider this. The first World Trade Center attack in 1993 by Muslims. The USS Cole bombers were Muslim. The Fort Hood shooter was Muslim. The shoe bomber was Muslim. The underwear bomber was Muslim. The Boston bombers were Muslim. The September 11th hijackers were Muslim. Mr. President, please identify what other violence is being committed against Americans in the name of any other religion. Or is it just coincidence? You know, you identify terrible deeds in the name of Christ. Why not identify terrible deeds in the name of Mohammed, the prophet of Islam? Calling Fort Hood workplace violence is a joke. People can't believe that that's how you categorize it. But then again, 
Your administration erases words out of reports identifying terrorists as Islamic. Stop defending Islam. Start protecting Americans. Stop saying what Islam doesn't stand for and start saying what you as our president intend to do about this. Recent polls suggest that the overwhelming majority of Americans think it's at least somewhat likely Islamic terrorists will launch an attack on U.S. soil soon. But I believe you are so comfortable with extremism that you've lost an understanding of the danger to Americans. You boast a security poli uh, policy of strategic patience. What are you waiting for? While you wait, they keep winning and Iran gets closer to nuclear enrichment. All the while you open our borders, reduce our military, and criticize Americans and America at the UN and in Cairo. If nothing more, you're consistent. Extremism is just a part of life. But the danger, your nonchalant attitude, puts our entire nation in jeopardy. Just this week, your FBI director said that there were open cases looking into individuals who may be connected to ISIS in virtually every state but Alaska. In any given situation in history, people look to a leader when they are concerned. Your actions, your statements, your personal behavior suggest that none of this is a big deal. Even ISIS sees that Americans seem desensitized to beheadings. And so they move to the almost unimaginable, burning someone alive. Mr. President, Americans are angry and frightened. The impact on us is enormous. For many, the fear is overwhelming. I hate to think that the only solution that we have is to look forward to a real leader in 2016. And God, I hope it won't be too late. And that's my open. Tell me what you think.